man, I'm excited for you guys to listen to this interview. Um, I'm just actually doing the intro after I did the interview as uh, my guest for tonight, Andy J. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name because I'm horrible with last names. Uh, he pronounced it in the interview. Um, took a break on working on the Arca Menards car for Daytona and came and talked with us. So, like, I am super ecstatic. Like, I couldn't have asked for a better better guest tonight for uh, the 20th episode. Um, yeah, this is, I'm actually, like, blown away by, like, this guy has worked his way up to from front wheel drive to a bunch of other things. He has a lot more stories that we can tell, but like he's literally ripping apart his Daytona car as we're talking um, and, and ripping apart his uh, street car. Um, so a little backstory, we were talking after we uh, stopped recording for the podcast and he's got, he's uh, taking the motor of his Ford Focus apart that he drove down there in because he uh, lost the timing belt and he's uh, probably going to change the head and, it, it's a great story. We're, we're definitely going to have to bring Andy back on again. Um, I appreciate his, him taking his time of his busy schedule uh, to come join us today. Um, so Andy is looking to run the full season in Arkman Arts. He's our first U.S. Uh, based guest. Um, but I, with his connections to Canadian racing, which we'll talk about in the podcast, um, it makes and especially connections like to me now with me having the modified and just finding out it's like a 35 year old car and it's it's still quick it's it's the history behind that car is um pretty cool um so i'm not gonna actually do too much of an intro today um i unfortunately didn't have time to pick up my merch item for this weekend uh this recording um, so, uh, I was supposed to pick up my fall bounty hat from bounty racing, but hopefully I'll wear it next week. Um, our guest, uh, <laughs> I believe is, uh, Corey Horn. So he's sponsored by bounty. So, uh, that'll work out perfectly. Um, so we're still wearing our Graham racing hat. Uh, you can check them out, uh, Brant Graham on Facebook, get yourself a Graham racing hat, get your, uh, hats from Savannah Strawn. Um, I had, got a Laurie Autier shirt from uh, Low SS Series. She also runs Dirt. I have a few other things on order. Uh, if you're watching and you have merchandise, I will want merchandise. Hats, t-shirts, whatever. I prefer hats because then I don't have to like try to like bring the camera down, show my shirt and stuff like that. Um, yeah, without inter- uh, further ado, we're going to bring on our guest for tonight and uh, introduce you to Andy Dre. And uh, if you like this kind of interview, trying to bring on some uh bigger guests like Andy and some we'll try to get some uh more guests like this on in the future. Um Andy's definitely gonna have a chance to uh come on again because he's got so many stories and it was a great conversation and maybe maybe next time we'll have him point what he's working on at the same time as he's uh doing the interview. I don't know. We'll see. But uh yeah. Enjoy the interview and uh hopefully like the podcast today. All right, welcoming this week to the Feeny Call podcast is Arca star and uh, I, what, like six modified division star, Andy J. So I'm going to give you a few minutes here. Why don't you uh, tell people about yourself and maybe pronounce your last name because I'll butcher it. <laughs> Jan Koyak. I'm just I'm trying to get this light out of the background here. Um, Andy Jan Koyak, I, I race a little bit of everything. Uh, I've been blessed in the last couple of years to... Uh, have uh, some opportunities with the with the Arca series. Um, kind of um, <clears throat> a hail mary deal. I took my life savings, bought a car, and um, caught the attention of uh, my now car owner Kevin Lapierre, and uh, a lot of help from Andy Sice, and um, just uh, got lucky. And here we are. We're uh, shaping up to uh, make an attempt at a full Arca season here. So, uh, run modifieds, midgets. Um, you know, race as much as I can. Uh, a lot of, a lot of help for my family. Um, we got a team of volunteers and, um, you know, we, we do it a little bit different than most. And I think we get, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, fan attention from, from that and, and doing things a little bit, maybe the old school way. So, uh, that's probably 
the uh, defining characteristic of uh, the Andy J Racing, um, you know, platform. See, you you know one of my friends up here with the damn price, um, and price. and uh, hard work is one of the ways a lot of us up here race. Um, we up here in Canada, we don't get to race sometimes as much as you guys down in the states do because well, snow, uh, cars don't stick on the snow very well. But um, what's it like to go from, like, a small indoor track to then, like, weeks later going around Daytona? <laughs> you know, I live in Buffalo, right? So there will be no preaching about snow to me. I've, but, seen, um, I've seen the pictures of the Arca car and the modified and everything outside in the snowstorm. Yeah. Um, well, right now I'm down in uh, the Arca stuff's all out of North Carolina now with uh, <clears throat> at the uh, Andy Sice shop. So, um I guess I can't claim that with the ARCA car at least anymore, but, um, yeah, I, once you get out there, you just sort of adapt, you know, it's like muscle memory. So, uh, you get out there with the indoor stuff and you get a practice in and you get a feel for it and, uh, same deal with everything else. You go to Daytona or Michigan or Charlotte and drive her off in the corner and it feels a little funny the first time. And then you just get your rhythm and focus and, um, you know, just try to execute. So, you vary from car to car to car. I think it was your, is it your daughter or something like that that was driving a, a bomber or something like that the other day I seen on Facebook? Yeah, my stepdaughter, Lexi. Yeah. Have, have you run uh, like a front wheel drive class yourself before? Or? Oh, yeah. You know, I started out, Um, <clears throat> I uh, I didn't make it to the ARCA series till I was like 31 or 32. So I did it, um, you know, the old school way. We came up with four cylinders and. Um, then I wanted street stocks and, um, just as I kept going, I was just able to, you know, be successful in whatever, um, division I was in and, um, you know, just caught a couple breaks, uh, one, uh, you know, a couple four cylinder races and, uh, my uncle Bob was able to build me a good street stock and then won some street stock races and, and Jim Salzbeck uh, had a mod sports and modified team and we were successful at that and, uh, the modified endeavor, um, wasn't coming along. So I kind of took that on my, on by myself and bought a modified and we did good with that. And the indoor midget stuff, uh, you know, I drove for Trey Hoddock for a while and then went and did that on my own. And, um, <clears throat> you know, spent a, spent a lifetime trying to, to have an opportunity to, to go race at a track like Daytona. And, um, just the reality was that it just wasn't happening, you know, just on, on wins alone and not saying I, <clears throat> you know, was winning more than anybody else. You know, I, I felt like I was a good driver, but I, it became, you know, having, having friends like Andy Sice as, as counsel and, and just talking to people that, um, I thought my best pathway was to just kind of take it on myself. So, um, <clears throat> the reality, really, I really wanted to do Daytona. And so I, I had, you know, my life savings basically and tied it up into one car and it was, uh, just enough. Thanks to Mr. Kenny Schrader, who gave me a good deal. And, um, you know, it was, it's a lot different to call a sponsor and say, Hey, if you, if you give me X amount of dollars, I'll go to Daytona versus calling a sponsor and say, Hey, I'm going to Daytona, no matter what, you know, you want in or no. And if, if we were able to, you know, get some sponsorship with, uh, for the first Daytona race and, uh, just, just a lot of, a lot of helpers. And, um, you know, we had a good primary sponsor with one rail and, a lot of people chipped in smaller sponsors and Andy Sice let me work on the car out of his shop and just everything worked out. We went out, we had a really good run. And, um, after that, you know, I, I, I figured, <clears throat> you know, we, we probably go on and, and try Talladega because at, at that point, you know, the, it obviously it, it's money, but most of the money was already spent. So, but as I began to pursue Talladega, I, I, you know, was inquired to and about a couple people that might want some some space on the car. And uh, we, we picked up uh, Florida Safety for that second race. And, and they've been one of our great sponsors and, and one of our best friends now. And we just had a family wedding and they were there for uh, my uncle's wedding. So uh, but the big the big one going into the second race was um, uh, Kevin LaPierre was introduced to me through a team member, Bruce Batcha. <clears throat> and. Uh, Kevin was able to bring one of his companies on board for the primary sponsor for Talladega, which was 
V1 fiber and, um, you know, we went there and had another great race and, uh, I think Kevin was hooked and, uh, Kevin became more and more involved in, in starting last year. Uh, basically I was racing with a couple cars that he owned and, um, he wanted to really, you know, get into it as far as the ownership side. So, uh, we, we basically took whatever I had and took whatever he had and, and he's the car owner now and it's glass motorsports. So, um, and he's, you know, with the help of Andy Sice, uh, KL, Kevin LaPierre, Andy Sice, AS, Class Motorsports, uh, they've been able to build a shop down here and, and continue to grow the team. And uh, they, they kept most of the basic parts of my team that existed before intact with, uh, you know, we have a volunteer pit crew that goes over the wall. We kept crew chief Mike Dayton and, um, you know, all most of uh, just about all my sponsors, you know, came along you know, as we transitioned in, into class motorsports and basically, you know, I had a good deal going, but it was a small deal. And, and we were able to take kind of what I had, had built as Andy J racing and, you know, use that as a foundation for class motorsports and, and, and grow it from there. So it's been a, a beautiful opportunity for me and, um, you know, we, we've been successful with it and we, we've shown some speed and, um, you know, didn't have uh, everything fall our way all the time last year, but we were able to string together a, a run of top 10 finishes towards the end of the year there. And, um, you know, had good runs on the, the road course and, and uh, had some really strong performances on intermediate tracks and, um, you know, not a lot of luck on the super speedway stuff, but, it, you know, probably the best speed that we had with 73. So, um, you know, I, I'd say we've improved in, in every, in every category. So, you know, and that's having more people involved and, and just doing things better. So, like you said, as you uh, you kind of had, since I've known about you, you've been a modified racer, and then you started moving up to the ARCA. What's your difference in your weekly maintenance and prep between, say, like a modified class car to, like, your ARCA car? Like, how many more hours are you putting in? And, like, what are some of the extras you would have to do for maybe someone that's thinking about stepping up to, you know, maybe join the ARCA Menard series? Well, the biggest, the biggest difference for me is, um, I never really focus too much on aesthetics with my stuff. Um, you know, I've, I've <clears throat> probably been, been credited with as much and through my history. And, um, the big thing with the Arca cars is, you know, you're, you're going there and it, it's, a you know, you have sponsors that, that are attending the race and you're, you're representing a lot of different people and, and certainly, you know, when I go to the racetrack now, I, I represent Kevin LaPierre and, and Andy Sice as the car owners and, um, you know, all of our sponsors that come on board. And so certainly there's, um, there's, there's much more of a, a routine in, in your preparations to, to make sure everything's uh, looking the part and looking correct. And, um, you know, obviously there's a lot of smaller details with, with the big cars where, with their own stuff and body stuff where you really got to be, you know, perfect with it to be perfectly honest uh you know the, the reality is if if you want to go to a modified race and, and just race for fun you know that that's cool and you know maybe your 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 investment for the day is you know x amount of dollars it's, it's not a small portion but you know it's it's not a you know a, hu a huge amount of money compared to you know when you go to the arca series you know you, you basically for the the investment that you're making just to get there um you really don't want to go to the track and and have your day ruined by you know something that was avoidable or something you could have missed in in your maintenance or something maybe it, you know you could have spent a couple more dollars on so it becomes a, a routine of really dotting your i's and crossing your t's just because you don't want to basically feel like you know you left the track kind of wasting the investment you know because it, it's a big investment to go there you know we go there and we have a lot of people and, and for the travel races people are flying and you know we get truck drivers and, and team members and everything that it takes to get there and um you know it, it it's it's tough at the end of the day to, to look those guys in the eye and say yeah you know well i'd uh you know spend a little bit more time on this or spend a couple more bucks on that maybe we'd uh you know not fall out of the race so it becomes um you know kind of unacceptable really just uh you know, obviously things happen and you, you can't think of everything, but um, you try to think of as much as you can and you, you really just try to be, you know, as close to perfect as you can be. So um, a lot of, lot of focus on 
you know, finishing the race and, and maintaining, you know, because, <clears throat> um, you know, you, you want to go there and, and give yourself the best chance. So, you know, when we go through the cars, you know, on the ARCA cars, one thing that's different is just everything you can touch is, is pretty much safety wired. And, um, you know, a lot of stuff you probably don't really bother with on the modified and just little, little details like two batteries and just routines for having to switch the battery on a pit stop and, uh, just, just planning and preparation and, and just kind of being ready for everything. So, uh, the, the week to week prep, um, it can be a little daunting cause you know, you might, you might do 999 things, you know, to be careful that you didn't need to do, but it, it's going to be that, that one little nut or one little bolt or, you know, one little, one little wire or something that you're going to find that one in 1000 that that might be the difference of you finishing the race or not finishing the race. So, um, <clears throat> it's very stressful, honestly. It's, it's just, uh, it's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of pressure, you know, you really want to just be perfect. So, uh, the, the week to week prep is, is quite a bit. So I was talking with Dan when I was talking about bringing you on, <laughs> And he says you have to tell the story about coming to the Autumn Colors Classic with about bringing his motor over the border. So apparently there's a big story behind that. Yeah, so um, I got on this kick where I was I was running uh, with the, the Oscar series a little bit and um, <clears throat> got to be good friends with uh, the McLeans and a lot of those guys and, and you know, really just great racers and um, – you know, had a lot of fun doing it and, and kind of participating in some of their bigger races. And, uh, we went up and, uh, we were fortunate enough to collect, uh, a couple of victories at, um, at a uh, track Barney up there and, uh, had a lot of fun racing with them guys. And we went up to, to Peterborough and we went to sunset and, uh, Flamborough. We went to all these different tracks and, and raced with these guys and just, um, had a ton of respect for those guys and everything they were doing and the, the innovation of uh, the class that existed at that time. And <clears throat> was just having a lot of fun doing it. And we, uh, I kind of got busy with modifieds for a couple of years after that. And, um, I wanted to kind of go up and, and try it. So, uh, they always had that big race at the end of the year, the, the autumn colors. And, um, I didn't have the correct motor for they, they'd, they basically, they, they switched the rules so I couldn't run my American type motor type car. So I had to get a motor if I was going to go do it. So we went to Canada and borrowed Dan Price's motor. So I'm coming back through, trying to get back through the States and <clears throat> we get stopped at the border and they're, they're questioning us. They're like, okay, well, why did you come up here? I said, well, I came up here for this, this motor for my friend. And they're like, well, you, you know, there's different emissions rules and, you know, Canadian made and American vehicles. So, you know, you can't just take a motor out of Canada and put an American vehicle. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. It's a race car. And they're like, no, like you, there's a tariff on this. Like you, you can't just combine an American and a Canadian car. Like, no, no, no. You don't understand. Like it's not going on the road. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a race car. It's, it's just it, like, you get it. They didn't get it. So they hauled me out of the car. And they dragged me into some office and they put a phone book, stock, I, a book, I had to be a foot thick of tariff codes. And they said, like, we cannot let you pass until you identify what this engine is and you find the tariff code. So I'm like, okay, like, what tariff? So I'm like, is there a tariff code that I don't have to, because I didn't want to pay duty. They, they want me to pay duty on it. I'm like, I, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to a race that pays like $500 to win. I'm already pretty far in the red on this deal so i'm like i'm like okay so is there like a classification where there's no tariff and i'm like reading through reading through and like if it's if it's for a farm vehicle then you don't have to pay duty on it so i'm like it's for my tractor so i, I claimed it as a tractor motor and they let me go <laughs> <laughs> which knowing dan price and having a tractor for all occasions now is even more suiting <laughs> So, yeah, uh, young and dumb. Um, is yeah, and we went up there, and man, it was like eight hundred dollars for a set of tires, five hundred to win. We sat there for three days. I got into a big wreck in the freaking heat race. It was like a hundred percent my fault, and like Dan Price is over trying to beat the guy up because everyone fights <laughs> up there. And, 
Uh, my, I had one crew guy with me. He's like pulling his Andy J shirt over his head, trying to hide. And we're, you know, Dan Price is trying to beat this guy up. I'm like, no, Dan, it's fine. Like, I, it was my fault. <laughs> but we had fun. Um, I forget how the race went. I think I broke or something, but um, we'll get back up there and try it again one of these days. I'd, I'd like to uh, say I won the colors before I could, uh, you know, that, that's one of the, uh, the many, 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 many things on the, on the list of uh, accomplishments to make here at some point. So um, right now we're kind of focusing on the ARCA thing though. Yeah. Cause I guess with the ARCA you run uh, the Canadian Thanksgiving weekend somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, usually it's Columbus Day. Um, it ends up being Super Dirt Week, but I, I don't. There's no off weeks anymore. We're, I think we're, we're going to go to Turkey Derby. I think here in a couple weeks. Um, it's actually like uh, Brett McLean came down for that once and, and ran with them guys. So, um, yeah, there's no off season. You know, you get indoors coming up. We're testing in Daytona in January, and just this never ends. So you just said you want to win colors before you say it's all said and done. So what class would you like to win colors and does it have to be modified or is it just, if you found a car that was, yeah, I, had I would think you... so. I would think so. And if, and if Gary McLean, you know, retires before I could do that, then, you know, that wouldn't be fun. Cause I want to, I want to race with, you know, some of my old friends to go do it. Cause we always had fun and a lot of respect and handshakes after. So, um, <clears throat> you know, when I, when I think about racing up there, I think about racing with them guys and, you know, all the fun we used to have and, um, you know, I guess that's sort of what you lose a little bit when you get too busy kind of doing bigger stuff. Like, it's, it's cool to, you know, <clears throat> I wouldn't, obviously, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, right? I, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. Like, like holy crap, all this stuff I get to do. But, um, you know, it, it is fun just to, you know, go up on a Saturday night to some track you've never been to and, and you know, race for 500 bucks with just guys that just are out there racing because they love it. And, you know, and um, certainly there's a lot of a lot of that up in Canada and, and Danny Price, too. You know, I just had fun racing up there when I could. So <clears throat> someday it'll be it'll be cool to go back up there maybe and, um, you know, have some fun. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get you back up here and who knows, maybe I can throw you in your old car that's in my trailer right now. I, th yeah, I think you cool. know that car pretty well. Yeah, so, yeah, we won a lot of races that car. Yeah. So what's the story on this car? Because like. I know, like, from when Dan got it, but, uh, so for people that don't know that my new modified is actually Andy's old, I think it's championship car. Yep. That car, um, it won, that car, I won the Wyoming County championship with it. Um, I won races at Spencer Speedway with that car. Um, when I had it, it was always orange and white. Um, yeah, that, that car was good to us. Um, Ran really good at Holland. Um, I was leading a race up there late, and um, we had an issue with water in the fuel. Long story. But um, I think I only ever won it at Holland and, and Perry with it. But I won a bunch of Perry, or I won at a Spencer and Perry with it. But, um, yeah, I won a bunch up there and, and had a lot of good runs at that car. So that car, whew, I purchased. we purchased that car from a guy named Billy Bird. and. Um, you know, he'd won some races with it, and it, it was a good car. And um, I took that car to Turkey Derby and, and raced it as a, as a wall modified. And, um, you know, did a lot with that car. And um, I guess the, the back story on that car was originally, it was it was a Dwayne Delameter car, I was told. And at some point, I believe it was a Siege Finanza car. It's a early 90s Troyer, like 91, 92, somewhere in there between 92 and 95 the, the, the history on it was a little spotty but um what i was to understand Dwayne delameter and siege finanzo that i don't know which in which order and then it got bounced around a little bit a guy named mike shields had it and um it, it's been well traveled it, it's been raced it, it's won races uh with a few different people and um it, it's cool to see it still you know out there kicking around and um we had a <clears throat> our buddy ricky kluth do a clip on it and we we're going to make it into a modified and just kind of just got too busy with this and that and ended up selling it to Danny Price. So uh, it's cool to see the car still going. Yeah. So I was running it there at Autumn Colors. I was, uh, well, I rented it at the Sunset uh, Velocity weekend, but we uh, lost a fuel pump in practice. 
And mm -hmm. when we changed the fuel pump, I accidentally bumped the wires off. So it was only six cylinders that day. So I don't really count that as me racing it. If it's got less than it's got intended on cylinders, especially against some of these guys with the uh, more super late model uh, style modifieds right now, it just it doesn't have what it takes to compete down two cylinders. But uh, yeah, we were running at colors. Um, I ran my first heat race and the championship points leader broke in the second day of practice, like walled his car badly. So we actually loaned him the car to chase the championship. He ran it for his second heat race, got his points, and then with weather, so technically this was his last car he ran for the championship. So technically it won a championship this year. But uh, we did the rain date the next week, and I ran a late model, a hot rod, and then the modified that day. By the time I got to the modified, this is the first time I've driven it as my car. The first time I drove it was for somebody else. And then... The guys that did it, they changed a bunch of work, uh, like a bunch of setup work on it. So I hadn't even driven it since they changed everything. Because I guess it was Greg Gibson did a bunch of setup work. I guess he worked with Gary and stuff like that. Um, Resquared the rear end up and everything like that and changed it up. And I think we were doing like 13 sevens at, or 13 eights at Peterborough. And like I was on used tires because I didn't have the money to put new tires on for one race and stuff like that. But I think if, uh, if I can find some time, I'll maybe see if you're available Thanksgiving weekend and if I have the car we'll get you a sticker set and will you come up and have some fun oh yeah I'd do that yeah T twist the rubber arm <laughs> yep just, just gotta make sure Gary shows up uh I'll try I didn't see Gary run this year because I think he's been working on like a super late model and a few yeah, other cars some pictures. so but uh yeah. there's, we'll, there's... We'll, we'll, we'll both come out of Oscar retirement <laughs> <laughs> but uh there's a few people that uh i think you'd have fun racing i had a blast like i said first ever time i was i was up there racing a few of the guys that run all year and um yeah it, it's a blast um the car is it still turns it hooks it literally that's the only car i've ever driven in my life that you you know how difficult it is to put throttle down at peterborough i literally hit the the gas probably about third into the corner and it just sticks all the way up Mm -hmm. it doesn't kick free or nothing i i don't know if that's just how the chassis is in that car but it just i've never had a car bite that much coming off the corner she's so survivor uh, <laughs> she's old school yeah they, they don't stick around for 35 years and they're not doing good so uh your plans for this year you said arca menards trying to do is it arca menards or do they change sponsorship yeah it's arca menards okay um so you're gonna do the full season hopefully in that you said yeah, you that's indoor? the tentative plan. Um, we we still gotta secure some some sponsorship for some of the short track stuff. Um, you know we're we're committed to the big track stuff for sure. And um, the, the <clears throat> I'll put it to you this way: um, if we get to the 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 fifth race and we're leading the points, um, I think I know my my car owner Kevin well enough that we're we're probably all in. Um, if we get to the fifth race and we've had some bad luck and and the sponsorship's not you know, panning out where we want, you know, maybe we'll uh, regroup a little bit and we'll make that assessment as we go. But um, it, it's our intention and we're actively pursuing, um, you know, getting the car filled up with stickers for all those races. So, um, you know, like I say, we, we feel really good about where we are sponsorship wise, kind of on the intermediate stuff and then the big track stuff and road course stuff. So um, really just about, uh, you know, shoring up kind of the, the short track stuff and, and the short track stuff, be, you know, believe it or not, it's actually not any cheaper than going to a big track. It's it's, it's you, more you wear and tear, right? Yeah, I mean, it. yeah, it's it's wear and tear. Um, you know, you don't got to spend, you know, Uber hours, you know, on body stuff. But, you know, it. you got to spend just as much time on suspension stuff. And, you know, tires are tires and they, they chew them up everywhere we go. So, um, <clears throat> you know, and I think for us, you know, I think part of the, the fun with doing this is, you know, we're short track racers, obviously, through and through. and But it, it's cool to go to a Daytona and a Charlotte, and I think we get a lot out of that. So I think, um, you know, if, if you had to, to pick, you'd probably pick those. And I think we're all kind of on the same page with that. But um, working on a couple different things, um, you know, hoping a couple, couple other things pan out as far as sponsorship stuff. And, you know, it'd probably be we get the sponsorship stuff we're going no matter what if uh you know if we are a little bit light on the sponsorship side you know and 
it's probably going to more depend on, on, you know, if, if we're not going anywhere in the points, you know, you know, then, then the short track stuff doesn't really probably make a lot of sense. And we'll make that assessment as we go. And, uh, you know, we got a smart bunch of guys around us and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make the right decisions when that time comes. But the way that the season kind of starts out is you go, you go Daytona, Phoenix, Talladega, Dover, Kansas, Charlotte, and we're committed to all those. So you you can kind of get six races in and, and kind of see how things are going before you got to worry about, you know, do we start building the dirt car for, you know, do we start building the dirt car for August? You know, do we really got to ramp up the short track program? Cause realistically you need probably two short track cars to get, to get through that. And uh, right now we only got the one. So, um, you know, it's probably gonna depend how things are going. So, you the indoor season. Do you? That's the the midget. You said you run the yep. indoor midget. So, yep. how long does the indoor season last? Uh, right now it's just two different weekends in January. Um, they've been fighting to get a third weekend going. They always used to have three. Uh, they had some building issues with the Syracuse building and um heard a rumor they're fixing it there was something with the floor they needed fixed as far as drainage of water it was a weird deal but um there's always something kooky with the indoor stuff because you know we're, we're driving race cars inside a building and you're not really supposed to do that so there's always you know different little ways that the the salmon family has to navigate you know getting around and you know building ventilation and everything else like we used to run the one track in trenton and they had to open the garage door on the one side you know during the race to let fumes out so you'd go on one end of the track and be cold one end of the track and be hot and <clears throat> you know there's always different different uh things they have to navigate as far as building codes and you know like allentown there's um inside that building there's a hospital so there's we can only run for so long there because the fumes drag into the hospital which obviously you know sick people and fumes and you know, there's, it, it's sort of funny, really, just to see kind of all the hoops that they jump through to make it work. And, uh, you know, we all kind of you know, kind of know what they're working against and, um, you know, happy to support it. But uh, it's it's definitely different. It's, um, you know, you don't see a lot of people kind of willing to go through all that to put something like that together anymore and uh, stuff like that's you know, going away a little bit in racing. So it, it's, it's cool to be a part of that and support those guys that are uh, busting their butts to kind of make something work that, uh, you know, maybe doesn't necessarily, you know, fit with the, all the regulations and rules that society likes to draw up and codes and everything else. So kind of feels like you're breaking the rules every time you do it. So it makes it fun. That's what I was going to say. Breaking the rules always feels fun, but racing in the same building as a hospital, that would just freak me out because anytime you know where the hospital is, you always need it. That's always been my rule. But um, I'm starting to run out a little bit of time as Zoom here, so I'm going to give you some time to thank your sponsors for 2023, thank the ones that are kind of confirmed for 2024 for you, uh, you guys, and let people know where they can find you on social media and any way they can get like merchandise or stuff off you. Yeah. Yeah, certainly Andy J Racing and, and Class Motorsports. Um, that's where all you know, Class Motorsports kind of handles the merchandise side. And Andy J Racing, uh, we're both on Facebook, and you know we like to get followers for everything. Um, just got uh, just ironing out the details with our 2024 plans with Wheelan, but uh, they're going to be back on board. We uh, talked to them in an email today, and certainly Florida Safety Automotive Consultants, Yukon Creek, uh, they're going to be on board uh plannerboxdirect.com they always help out mike sells golf carts he's been messaging me he wants back in so uh we got a lot of a lot of good deals going on um working on some new deals too we had sabaro pizza there at the end of the year so um you know working on uh, maybe getting them on for a couple more races and, and dax market's always with us and well what the heck i just got a car i can look at it right here so uh <laughs> thermal foams will be back for sure so uh pinnacle travel set Pinnacle Travel Staffing, um, Plots Lubricants, Velocita. Um, you know, a lot of people really jump on board to, to make this work for us. So um, pretty blessed to have all the support and always looking for a little bit more. So, um, you know, chasing this full deal. So we're looking to make some new partners here in 2024 and uh, 
keep on going and having fun with all the uh the partners that have made us made this work for us and got us to this point and um you know like i say it, it kind of becomes like uh <clears throat> it really does become like you know friendships and then and, and like family you know like i say two of our uh, two of our big sponsors are at my uncle's wedding this weekend and um you know it just makes it fun you know and it's it's cool to kind of share the experience with different people and and uh you know everyone knows that it takes all of us to, to make it work so to keep going with it and and be able to get it as far as we got it's uh rewarding and exciting and um you know the ride of our lives so i'm glad to have you on here you're my first uh international guest being up here as a canadian podcast so Unless I get somebody from the Cup Series, you'll actually be the fastest person ever on this podcast going around Daytona. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Right? I think so, we, we go faster in Michigan, though. I don't have I, a speedometer in the car, but we ran the same gear, and I was nailing a 7,500 chip at the end of the straightaway in Michigan. So I, I figure Michigan were probably going closer to 200 than anywhere else. Oh, yeah, because you'd still run the restrictor plate, right? Not in Michigan. No, no, but I mean at Daytona and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah. So I, I, I got the tack right. So at at Daytona Talladega, we hit like seventy one hundred. And uh, Michigan, when I was running second there for a while, when I had Jesse Love pushing me down the straightaway there, um, I actually thought the engine blew up because I started hitting the seventy five hundred rev limiter at the end of the straightaway. So I, I figured we were moving pretty good. So, um, I know Daytona. I think we were averaging like one eighty two, one eighty three. So, um. You know, at the end of the straightaway, Michigan. I don't know how fast we're going, but I, I'm pretty sure we're hauling ass. So, um, you know, that's pretty cool. A lot faster than delivering the pizzas that got you there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. I'm going to thank you for joining us, and um, I'll try to send you down some stickers and stuff like that of the podcast, and I'll let you slap them on a modified or something like that. Cool. Send them down. We're going to Turkey Derby next week. Awesome.